Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. The release candidate process continues as 0.14 RC4 is out this week. The release is out on crates.io, so you can view it using the drop down in the top left, and you can view the full list of changes over on GitHub. I've got the link over on the website. The 0.14 milestone is almost complete. As you can see here, as of the recording of this video, we've only got three items left, and it looks like the stable release will happen this week. Although, to be clear, there is no date set specifically, and the release will happen when it's ready, and the release candidate process has run its course. Accordingly, there is a slowdown of merging major new features that aligns with the solidifying of the 0.14 release before the 0.15 development cycle kicks off. If you've been using the 0.14 release candidate, you might notice some changes upgrading to RC4, including the inclusion of background color in bundles, such as the image bundle. 14.0.17 adds them back into these bundles for developer experience purposes, with a full explanation of what that change looks like in the PR. Previously, they had been removed. And Bevy supports using shaders to render UI elements with Bevy UI. Thus, the UI material example has been updated to include a progress bar style shader that you can see here. This is overall a fairly simple shader, and those that already have comfort or are comfortable with writing shaders likely already understand how to write it. But many coming to Bevy who are not yet comfortable with GPU programs will find this example useful. As usual, Alice's merge train is a maintainer level view into the active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work, as well as calls for help with things like release notes and migration guides. But of course, just because we're preparing for the 0.14 release doesn't mean the wider ecosystem isn't still working on their own games and their own crates and their own demos. This demo is MihoCraft, which is a 2D Minecraft clone that recently gained new main world selection and pause menus, as well as player customization and other features. Our next demo is a proof of concept for a vampire survivors-like game where player upgrades are nodes in a graph with the goal of large amounts of player freedom and choice with respect to those upgrades. Up next, we've got Raymarched and Rasterized. This demo shows off Raymarched and Rasterized meshed graphics playing together nicely. Any object you see in this demo with a reflection is a Raymarched object, while those without reflections are meshes. The Quartz DSB and Visual Programming project has two examples in the showcases this week. This one is Targets Go Spinny. As usual, these demos are heavily audio based and benefit from being viewed at the link for the YouTube video. Up next, we've got more node graphs. This is scripting where all nodes are fully automatically generated. It compiles to a VM and then runs in Rust using reflection and reflection on functions. Publishing this work as a crate would require function reflection in Bevy and currently relies on a number of forks, but is on GitHub for those that are interested in this work. It is possible that the function reflection functionality could get merged for the 0.15 release, so we'll have to wait to see if that happens. Up next, we've got Gunbug. Gunbug is a 2D online co-op horde survival shoot 'em up It focuses shooting lots of enemies with lots of guns, hence the centipedes, which have lots of hands for lots of guns. About a year's worth of work has gone into the project so far, and it is currently available to wishlist over on Steam. From published games to Blender-inspired workflows, these are Blender-inspired transform controls. You can constrain to the global or the local axis, as you can see here, and these lines will look familiar if you've ever used Blender before. And if you looked on YouTube over the last, say, five to 10 years, you may have seen Brackies, who recently started posting videos on YouTube again, shifting from Unity to Godot-based videos. With that, they've posted a beginner-level 2D platformer tutorial that you can see here. This showcase then is an attempt to port the end result of that tutorial to Bevy, which you can see here. The implementation is available on GitHub and of course uses a few crates that are, in my opinion, well-established and common choices. This includes Bevy ECS LDTK for level editing, Bevy XPBD 2D for colliders inside of the levels, and Leafwing Input Manager, which feels pretty standard for dealing with input in Bevy these days. It also uses Bevy Collider Gen, which is a lesser known crate that creates XPBD and Rapier Colliders from images with transparency, as well as Bevy Editor Please as an in-app editor. Note that the naming of that last crate is PLS, not the full word spelled out. The implementation of the end product here does rely on Bevy 0.13.2. So it'll be interesting to see what changes for 0.14. Up next, we've got MS Paint effectively. <laughs> this is an MS Paint style editor entirely in Bevy without any external crates. 
And if you're a fan of Super Monkey Ball or Marble It Up, this is a marble slash sphere controller in its own level. It is the first steps towards creating this style of game where you control a ball, a marble, or some other spherical object and navigate around a level. Next up, we've got a 2D depth buffer with Bevy ECS tile map demo. This demo shows off the first working version of a Bevy ECS tile map combined with a 2D depth texture. This allows the player character to walk through what would otherwise be a single image like this archway. There's a little more work to do to make sure that the depth textures are being set correctly, but this shows off all of the pieces working together. This work uses additional work on top of Bevy, including 13069, which implements a 2D opaque phase with a depth buffer, as well as similar changes in Bevy ECS tile map. And we've seen quite a few terminal related Bevy crates, but this is a new crate for making terminal games in Bevy. And it's not yet published, but supports a number of features, including alpha blending, raw terminal input, sprites from images, and a text overlay. Blender Bevy Components Workflow is a project that pushes forward the Bevy and Blender integration workflow using Blender add-ons and Bevy crates. This showcase shows off a number of features in the upcoming release that is not yet out, including full level hot reloading, blueprints, and more. The project is going to be renamed to Blenvy or B-L-E-N-V-Y, and we'll cover it again then. Until then, there's plenty of extra videos and information in the Discord thread. And we saw it earlier, but Quartz is a visual programming and DSP playground that now has a deployed Wasm build. You can learn to use the Wasm build in the learning section of the README. And if you're interested in seeing what it can do, you'll want to check out the YouTube video, which has all of the related audio. And did you know Bevy supports light maps? Light mapping workflows were unlocked with 0.13's release, as you can see here, which is done using tools like the Light Mapper and Blender. This is a demo trial of Bevy's light map support, uses the light mapper and blender to bake the light maps. And the scene here is a GLTF while the light maps are inserted on each module individually. And Bevy Lunex work is always exciting. This demo is an initial work on a heads up display or HUD and world space diegetic UI using Bevy Lunex in the Bevy Punk example. Diegetic UI for those that are unaware is sort of world space UI as if the character that you're playing was looking at it in the real world while you also get to see it as the player. And ray marching is super popular as well. In this case, we've got fractal cone marched worlds. These sporish creatures we've seen in the past issues have gotten some cone marched fractal worlds to explore. Cone marching is a progression from ray marching that expands the rays that are fired to have a thickness. And if you've worked with rendering before, you might recognize this as a triangle. This is the first triangle, in fact, using Bevy and a custom DirectX renderer. The demo is available on GitHub for those that want to go in through it, and it's an extremely interesting example if you're interested in low-level rendering implementation. But it will also probably not apply to the vast majority of Bevy users and isn't planned to get upstreamed. And up next, we've got our crate releases. Verticals is what you're seeing here. It's an expressive CPU-based particle system for the Bevy engine. It of course includes a number of different particle-based features, and it's notable that this crate is compatible with Bevy 0.14 and up. Bevy Reflect Utils is a small pluginless utility library, making it easier to work with reflection in Bevy. Pluginless refers to the fact that you don't have to add a plugin to use it, but you get some nice functions anyway. Next up, Bevy Text Edit is a new crate for editable text. It supports multiple text boxes as well as text cursors. And finally, we've got Smesh. Smesh is a polygon mesh manipulation library meant for use for procedural generation. You can see here how to build a new Smesh and add some vertices to it. And that's it for crates and showcases this week. As always, the website shows pull requests that were merged this week, issues that were opened, and pull requests that were opened. But if you're looking to get involved in Bevy, the one thing that is probably most helpful right now is to go to the Bevy website repo, check the 0.14 milestone, and see if there's an issue for release notes or migration guides that you can help out with. While code going into the 0.14 release may have slowed down, Bevy is well known for its great release notes, release blog posts, and migration guides. And those all take quite a bit of time to build up. So that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next week when hopefully we'll have 0.14.